Welcome to this episode of the Joyful Scaling Podcast. Today we're talking about pre-selling. How to pre-sell. Like how to sign clients before your program is even ready to go live. Like before everything's done, right? Before the content is created. So in this power packed episode, here's what you're go- we're going to talk about. How I sold premium services, like 10K, even 25K programs without the things that the gurus say that you need. And not just how I did it, but how you can too, right? I'm going to share why pre-selling benefits not just you, but also your client. Because we always need to take action that is in our client's best interest, right? We can't be in this for ourselves, right? So you're going to, you're going to tell you why it benefits them as well as you. And I'm also going to give you one big caveat when it comes to pre-selling. That is, when should you not pre-sell? So listen for that. And then I'm going to give you the first step to pre-selling. And thankfully, I'm happy to report that is nothing salesy, nothing pushy in any way. Plus, I'm going to give you my best tip for discerning who you can trust when it comes to business advice. So lots of stuff happening in this episode right here. And my intention and my prayer for you for this episode is that it would open your mind to see a simpler approach to generating revenue, right? Things do not have to be as complicated as our human brains may lead us to believe. Now, if you follow me and you've listened to the podcast for any length of time, you know I'm all about doing business simply and joyfully. And so through this show, I love to introduce new ideas and strategies for you to get you making money in your business and impacting people's lives quicker and always, always in alignment with your Christian values. Now, if you're like most entrepreneurs, you probably think that you need the following, what I'm about to talk about, before you even think about selling a program or it could be a course. But I like to work with my clients, um, you know, in a sophisticatedly simple business that has one, maybe two offers as opposed to a whole stack or ladder of offers, right? And so for me, I'm all about the premium program for the premium price, for the premium value and result for the client, as opposed to monkeying around with, you know, courses that are like a thousand dollars or less. But All right, so most entrepreneurs think you need the following before you can sell a program. All right, they think you need all the content done, all the training videos, all the swipe files, all the templates and and the checklists and everything, right? And they also think they need to get all of this content on a platform, an expensive learning platform right? Where all the content has to live. It has to be ready before I even think about, you know, sharing it with the world. Hmm. Is that true? And a lot of times entrepreneurs think you need a fancy sales page. Oh, and I have to get the right verbiage. It has to be right. Got to pay somebody thousands of dollars. One time uh, in a past life, when I was in business with my sister, we paid someone $5,000. She came very highly recommended as a copywriter. And I can tell you, it was because we needed it turned around pretty quickly. Oh, my goodness. No. Ladies, the better you know your best clients, not the world, right? I don't want to, I'm not serving the world. I'm serving my very best clients, only not just all Christian women, but the Christian women who are truly committed to serving the Lord with their gifts through business in a big way without playing small. That's my best client, right? Who's your best client? Well, the more you know them, you know how they think, you know how they speak. Nobody can write copy like you can, but you have to put your mind to work. Anyway, that's a slight digression there, but, but all of the above that I've just talked about, The content done, the expensive learning platform, the fancy sales page. They're nice to have ahead of time before you start marketing or selling something. But trust me, they are not necessary. (laughs) I have sold 10K, even 25K packages without a dedicated sales page or anything referencing it other than a, you know, click here for a call. I mean, literally not much more than that. And I got people to jump on a call with me and talk about it, right? In fact, I've sold all the spots of my current 
Joyful Scaling Mastermind, which is my inaugural, my charter uh, mastermind group, right? My betas without a sales page. And that's a container, I can tell you, with a premium price tag. And on the phone, chatting with a couple of the ladies that are now inside the mastermind, they came to the call knowing that they were a yes. And there was nothing really, no details about it online. Okay. One woman started the call saying, I'm so excited to work with you and find out more about it. Like, that's great. And another one said, not in the beginning, but when it got time to the end and she's like, okay, what does this look like? How much does it cost? She didn't even blink at the price. She goes, I know I need to work with you. How is that possible? How is that possible? Well, it's because I'm giving value. I have a body of work out there that shows that I know what I'm talking about. I have testimonials that show that my clients get results, right? My body of work consists mostly of this podcast. We're nearing 300 episodes. I hope you're uh, listening to episode 296. If not, go there now. And started about four, minute four, minute five to talk about the details of how you can enter my biggest giveaway ever, $1,500 worth of prizes. You could be one of the four very blessed winners there. So go to episode 296 and listen to my 300th episode giveaway. But do you have a body of work that you are pointing your best clients to consume? You're giving them value. You're giving them ahas. They're seeing how it's possible to solve the problem that has been haranguing them. And they see not only is it possible, but that you're the person to do it for them. Okay, so please do not believe all the hype you hear out there about what you need, quote unquote, in order to generate revenue. Okay, there's lots of gurus out there saying lots of stuff. And so I want to I want to have a slight digression here. And, and if you're thinking, well, wait a minute. Now, I hear what you're saying, Judy. I trust you. This feels weird about the pre-selling because, I don't know, it just feels like putting the cart before the horse. Something about it feels a little counterintuitive. And it is. And so you may be saying, well, how in the heck do I know who to believe, right? And, you know, believe me when I say I understand how it can be difficult to discern who to believe. Like, who can you really trust? You know, this influencer over here looks like she's doing well and she says this. And then this other guru over here says something completely different. And then, Judy, you say this. And who am I to believe? Well, as always, my best, best advice for you is to always ask the Lord for his guidance and his wisdom. And then do your own due diligence, Right? Now, I am going to suggest on this point of who can I trust. I want you to create for yourself a red flag list. What does that mean? I want you to think about your past purchases, and in particular the programs or courses you've invested in that were a disappointment or failed to live up to their promises. And as you look back, I want you about those sales experiences from beginning to end, from the sales call to delivery and whatever whatever else experience you might have. I want you to think back on that and identify for yourself where were the red flags. It could be, um, you know, she was late to the call or she kept changing the date. Or there was a lot of negative reviews online, right? And no positives. She, it looked like she may have been new to the industry. And I don't, I I kind of doubted and wondered if she knew what she was talking about. Something like that. Whatever that is, work your brain, think back about those bad quote unquote sales experiences and write out the red flags and keep that list handy, right? So that whenever you're talking with someone, and you're considering investing in a program, you can kind of already have that go-to list. Hmm, something about this just doesn't feel right. And maybe that's one of the things on your red on your red list, your red flag list. You know, if as I'm in investigating the opportunity, if my gut just there's something there, hmm, maybe I need to trust my intuition on that. Maybe that's God's nudging, right? The Holy Spirit's nudging. So be discerning so that you can invest wisely. All right. Hope that's helpful to get that red flag list done. All right. Let's continue with what else you don't need to sell your program before it's ready to go live. I want you to know that nothing needs to be 100% perfect to make it ready to go. 
Because, in fact, nothing is perfect except the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen to that? I myself am constantly thinking about my clients, and I tell them that all the time. I am always putting my brain to work, seeking to improve on the delivery so that my clients get better results quicker. Like that's the nature of what we do. Any service provider worth their salt, right? We give our very best. And the more clients we take through our program or through our service, right? The better data and information we have. And so when we put our brains to work and we power think, oh, I love to power think. Do you love to power think? And we're thinking specifically, how can I help my clients get better and faster results? When you are constantly looking at and caring for your clients in this way, your program will never be status quo, right? It's always going to be evolving, meaning improving. I hate the word evolving, evolution, like the, you know, the, um, the pagans kind of stole that word. So I don't like using that word, but, but your business does evolve and your programs do evolve. They get better and better when you have your focus and eye on that. So hear me on this. Never seeking, if you are never seeking to improve and up-level your program or your services, if like it's done, I, don't, I can put it aside, never think about it again, that is you're doing it with an unapologetic focus on your client and how you can serve them better. Like, like if you're not unapologetically always keeping your client and their needs top of mind, and if you seek to just create something and kind of keep selling it evergreen without an intentional desire or process for continual improvement, then in my opinion, you are not serving your clients and you're being selfish. (laughs) Your, Your focus is on yourself. And in the long run, that may be your downfall. I've seen coaches and they're seven and eight figure coaches who they just get really comfy. Hey, it's working. I know that module's five years old, but look, it works and I'm not pausing to improve that. That's a problem. And so when I say that if you are not intentionally and regularly seeking to, you know, put your brain to work and find areas to improve, that that's not a good way to do business. That is not honoring the Lord. I know those are strong words, but I'm here to give you my very best. And I'm always going to tell you the truth. On this show, it's not about telling you what you want to hear because As a respected thought leader in the coaching space, you know, I'm setting the gold standard in business coaching for Christian women. I need to tell you what you need to hear. I need to tell you the truth. So I hope you received that in the loving way in which I presented it. Okay. Now with all that by way of background, let me tell you why pre-selling can be beneficial, not only for you, but especially for your client. Now here's a scenario I see far too much, and maybe this has happened to you. Inspiration strikes. You have an idea for a new program. Woohoo! You're excited about this new container you're going to put together, right? And you think this idea is amazing. And so you commit to creating it. And bravo for the decision to do it and the commitment. But, 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 before committing to creating a new offer, you must have done some due diligence because you need to make sure that the result or the transformation that that something, that new service, that program is going to provide is a result or a transformation that your best clients not only want, but that they need. They're looking for it, right? That is that the problem your new offer solves is indeed an urgent problem for your best clients, okay? So again, I often see this. You have a great idea. You think it's amazing. So you say, you know what? I'm going to go to work creating it. And so you spend hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars putting this program together, Uh, you do this, spend a lot of money on equipment and software to record and edit your content, which really guys, let's just use zoom, make it easy. And if you need some editing, use someone on Fiverr for, you know, $20 an hour or something. Okay. (coughs) Excuse me. But, but so many times I see this, you spend hundreds and even thousands of dollars getting this content edited and done. And then you spend several weeks or maybe even months recording and editing the course content, as I said. So it's not only a matter of dollars, it's about time. And then you set up your online course, website, or platform, spending even more money hiring somebody else to handle that or the money getting the platform itself. And then you spend hours and hours of your own time trying to do techie stuff that a CEO shouldn't do anyway. And then after all that, you finally start promoting your offer. 
And what I see all too often is despite all that wonderful work and all of your well-intended efforts, nobody buys. So has that ever happened to you? Now, if it has, there's no shame. There is definitely no need to regret. The question is, what have you learned from it? And that's why I'm bringing you today's episode on pre-selling because the way to avoid creating something that nobody wants, that nobody buys, is to pre-sell it even before you create it. And again, if that feels wrong, it may feel like putting the cart before the horse. I'm here to tell you it serves as not only a potential revenue generator, but perhaps more importantly, it serves as an invaluable marketing research tool for you. Okay. Now, in the case where you pre-sell and nobody buys, you can make that an incredible learning experience by talking with your audience, right? If you spend, you know, two weeks or a month, whatever it is, pre-selling and nobody buys, then you can go back to them and ask, please, I, I'm doing market research. I would love to chat with you. Why didn't you buy? What was it? Was there something missing? Were you looking for something else? Some other problem that's, you know, top of mind right now? And if so, what was it? Ask a series of questions and then you can learn from it and say, oh, I was off by just a little bit. They didn't really want this. They really wanted and needed that. Okay. Now, again, this idea of pre-selling may feel backwards, but it can absolutely be done with the best interest of the client in mind. Because look, when you sell ahead of time and nothing's done, like, the content's not done, but but you know it's good, and I'm going to talk about what you need, the caveat, in order for you to pre-sell, but why it benefits the client to pre-sell even before it's done is that you're offering them the opportunity to work with you in a beta situation where you're going to solve their urgent need, and they get a discounted rate in exchange for being one of the first through it. So it's a win-win. You're going to learn a lot in the beta, which is the first round of whatever the service is or this program, and they're going to get what they came for, the result they're looking for at the best price possible, right? Now here's the big, big caveat. This is like the big flashing red light, okay? So come back to me if you're not, if you kind of uh, got distracted, come back. The first time you run a program or you offer a course or a service of any kind, you can absolutely present it live as you go. But here's the caveat. Only after you have the structure to it laid out in detail and you are confident that you can deliver exactly what you promised through the marketing of the program. Okay? So you don't have to spend hours and hours getting the content done, the videos, the swipe files, all of that before selling it. And in fact, so long as you have this framework, for the program laid out in detail. And what do I mean by that? You have the outline. You know exactly what you're going to be covering. You carefully identified all of that along with the outcomes, the transformation that your clients are going to get from working with you inside this container, right? And so long as you have all that done, the best thing you could do may very well be delivering it live. And that's going to allow you to gain so much feedback from the first participants. And that feedback is going to allow you to tweak and improve the program so that the final completed program materials and the delivery of it, once all is done, will be the best that it ever could be. Okay, but again, I want to emphasize the caveat that without that initial framework and outline detailed, well thought out ahead of time, and without your confidence in exactly what those outcomes that your clients are going to get are, I do not recommend you selling the program ahead of time. And, and why? Because at that point, without all of that, you don't know what you're selling. <laughs> and that is never in service to your client. Okay? Does that make sense? But assuming that you've got the framework or the outline and you know how you're going to be delivering it and you know the outcomes, let's talk about how you could really pre-sell that program. Okay? And, you know, how we've sold programs before created and it comes down to the V word, value. You sell ahead of time. You pre-sell by creating value, valuable content around the things you're going to be teaching inside. So for example, let's say you are a copywriter and you're selling a program on curating brand messaging. Okay. Now you're going to put together your outline of what you're going to cover. And for each step of the outline, okay, let's say you have five steps to curating, you know, optimal brand messaging, okay, or magic brand messaging. I hear that a lot. We don't do magic here as Christians, right? But, but let's say you have five steps 
For each of those steps that you have outlined, I want you to identify at least three subtopics. Okay, so three subtopics for each of five steps that gives you 15 different topics that you could speak to in the way of valuable content, right? Whether that's posts or carousels or videos or reels or whatever it looks like, right? You can deliver this valuable content via social or via email or via your podcast or podcast guesting or via blogging, Pinterest, YouTube, all the rest, right? But but the point here is you are giving them a taste of what's inside. And even in the way you deliver the content, you give them a win, but you identify for them the gap or the next issue that needs to be solved so that they are following along in the content that you're putting out there, this valuable content that is giving them a taste of what is to come through the full program, right? And they're just riveted. And they're like, your best clients, because that's who you're writing to, that's what you, why you've created this in the first place, and that's who you're writing to, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, I can't wait until I get the next email or see the next day's posts or something. Okay, you're following me? Now look, there is a lot I can get into here regarding how to be strategic when choosing these topics right? And solving a mini problem that your clients have, but at the same time, identifying another problem that they're still going to need to be addressed through working with you inside the program. And I don't have time to get into all of that. But, you know, there's different ways to do this. You could, as I just said, um, give valuable content through your email, through social posts, videos, things like that. But you may also choose to create a mini course or an email delivered course, you know, which would really be an overview or a summary of a section or a portion of the entire program that you would offer. Okay. So that's two ways that you can pre-sell. Okay. Do you got me? So the first one is just via social neat content that's delivered via email, social podcast guesting, just kind of teasing some of the, some of the, um, you know, finer points, some of the more uh, summary type points I meant to say of the program. Or what I just mentioned, you may kind of put a section of it together and create a mini course where yes, they will get a win from it, but there's still much more they need in order to fully leverage what they need to get their full transformation. And finally, another thing you could do is you could open a Facebook group, inviting your very best clients to get a first sneak peek into the things that you're going to be covering in the program, right? So that it's you're encouraging engagement and you get visible there for the for your audience. You're there to answer questions. Maybe you have some lives and there's a lot of excitement around this new potential offer and you're inviting in the very best people who uh, your very, very best clients who are looking for the solution that you have for them. Okay. All right. Now I know I've thrown a lot at you, so I'd highly recommend you go back and listen to this. Okay. Now I want to end almost end here. I have two things to tell you first, some options for delivering amazing content for your new program. Okay. So one is we've talked about it and that is run your program live, right? Meet on Zoom. Hey, we're going to be spending 12 weeks together. Every week I'm going to be doing a training and then we're going to be doing group coaching or whatever that looks like for you. So you could run and deliver the content live and then you take those recordings, use those materials for your program, right? Uh, Another thing you could do is you could create the first couple of trainings before selling like maybe the first module or the first and second module. And then you'd have a schedule for completing all the rest and you're staying like a week or two ahead of what is actually being rolled out. That's another way to do it. Okay. And then the third way is you could actually post trainings in a Facebook group. And why I love that for an initial program or a new program, especially this is for those of you um, launching, you know, going from one-on-one to group, okay, Uh, that rather than jumping into and investing serious dollars into a learning platform, which may or may not be best for you and your clients, because there's so many options out there, you don't want to rush that decision making, you don't want to ruminate it either, but you don't want to necessarily choose something because you feel like you're in a hurry, right? 
but you could post trainings in a Facebook group. That's free, right? There's no need to invest dollars into a learning platform right away. Okay. All right. So I hope that's helpful. Now, the final thing I want to talk about is if the idea of selling something that isn't created yet just doesn't feel good. Hey, Jude, love you and all, but mm, can't get behind this. I have a couple of thoughts for you. Okay. First, always go to God for his guidance and direction. Lord, is this what you want me to do? Does this make sense? Here's what I want to do. Here's the program. Here's my outline. Judy says I can sell this. Help me, Lord. Right? That's always your first point of uh, of strategy, where to go, what to do, to decide on that. Next, I will tell you it took a while for me to overcome my mental blocks around pre-selling. But now I can say with 100% confidence that this can be your next best step. Again, so long as you have taken the time to create an outline and you've thought through the delivery and the content and you can fulfill the result that your best clients want as it relates to the urgent problem that you're solving for them. Okay? So think about that. I was there. I know where you're at. And sometimes you just got to take a leap of faith. Hello, faith-fueled business, right? Judy says, I, if I have this, I can do that. I'm going to trust her. I'm going to go all in. I'm going to, right? Okay, hang on. Now, why would you not pre-sell? Another thing. Your belief may be off. Judy, what are you talking about? Well, the belief triad. You know, in episode 237 of the show, and I would encourage you to go back, I go deep on what the belief triad is. This is the secret to sales, effortless sales, sales that feel good, right? And what is the belief triad? Very briefly, it's three things, a triad. Belief in you as the expert, belief in your best clients, that they're out there, they're looking for you and for this solution that only you can provide. And third, belief in your offer. That is, you love it. You know it would produce the results for your clients. And it's a win-win when it comes to value, right? Value for value. You know that your client is going to invest in you, but the return they're going to get, the ROI, is 3x, 4x, 5x, 10x, right? So when you have belief in those areas, in you, your best clients, and your offer, that is the belief triad. And when you really believe in all those things, when you have faith, and belief in all of those things, selling becomes fun and it becomes easy. Okay. Now, if you hate sales and just the word leaves you feeling dirty, I know there's some of you out there for you. I'd encourage you to listen to episode 246. There I talk about drama free selling and the fact that selling is noble. It is of God when it's done with the client in mind and not you and not the quote unquote almighty dollar. No, the dollar is not almighty and we don't serve it. We serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we do business his way, selling is absolutely noble and it is serving to the highest extent. And finally, I'll leave you with this. If the idea of pre-selling just doesn't feel good, if you feel you're not ready, I want you to explore why. I want you to sit with yourself and say, why? Does this not feel right? Why do I feel that I'm not ready? Is it really perfection? Perfectionism? And if that is a stronghold for you, sister, I will tell you, you need to overcome that. And thankfully, by the Holy Spirit's power, you can, hallelujah, go to God. Help him. Ask him to help you with that. Lord God, I I, I hold myself up to this level of perfection and I keep getting ready to get ready to get ready and I'm preparing to prepare to prepare and and Lord uh, is it ready right should I do this and if it's not perfectionism is it really procrastination maybe an element of you know I don't like sales and so I'll just keep putting off oh not ready yet maybe next week maybe next month or maybe it's fear I'm afraid I- I've never gone from one-on-one to group My goodness, do I really, can I really do this? Do I have what it takes to operate and serve and deliver the value and and, and the result in a group setting? And a part of that fear may be imposter syndrome. Again, like, who am I to do this? But you know, from listening to the show 
and from being more than anything a woman of the Lord Jesus Christ, that in him, even the impossible is possible. Hallelujah. And so I encourage you today, ladies, to to really spend time with God on this issue of pre-selling and anything standing in your way. And ask him to reveal to you those stumbling blocks and then ask him by his power to allow you to overcome them. Because you've got, you've got people to serve. The very people the Lord God has identified for you since before he created the world. It's, it's amazing. It's such a beautiful responsibility. We want to serve him with these beautiful gifts that he's given us through business, which is his calling for your life and for my life. So let's step up. Let's step out in faith trusting him all right well thank you so much for listening ladies again go back to listen to episode 296 because i want you to enter into our 300th episode giveaway where you could win a hundred dollar gift card or a twelve hundred dollar seat in the academy so listen i've got to run if you have any questions you can always reach out to me at judy weber co Wherever you are, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you are, I am there at Judy Weber Co. And you can also leave a voice note for me and it may appear on an upcoming episode. Just go on over to judyweber.co slash podcast. That's where you can find links to all the shows on all the favorite platforms. And if you scroll down a bit, you'll see the microphone. You can leave me a voice note there. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you, sister. And we'll see you next time.